Hello. Hello. Hi. I'll be right there. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, just so you know, I think Zoom tells you automatically, but we are, it's all being recorded. Okay. Oh, I love your background. <laughs> That's great. I should have gotten one. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Crunch time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Must be really busy. Um, well, yeah, thank you for taking the time during crunch time. I know how hectic this must be. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, we can just get started. I have a short little intro to read, and then I can just ask you a few questions if that's okay. Sure. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get started then. Uh, hi, my name is Sarah and is part of a collaboration between the Cambridge Somerville Node of 350 Massachusetts and Green Cambridge. I will be talking to Nicola Williams, who is running for election to the Cambridge City Council. We have previously asked all the candidates to provide written responses to a short questionnaire addressing the tensions between important but different climate change goals. Not all the candidates responded. You can see the full list of questions and the responses of the candidates who did write back on our organization's websites. We'll also be showing the URLs on screen at the end of this discussion. Nicola was one of the candidates who did respond. Nicola, thank you so much for taking the time, especially at such a busy point in the election cycle. Um, I'm now going to ask a couple of questions based on what you wrote. The goal is to clarify some of the ideas that you proposed, to get more details about how you think some of your ideas might actually be implemented, and to be specific about how you intend to use the city council's limited power to ensure that the city administration actually implements the policies in the manner you think it should be done. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'll just go into my first question. Um, in order to achieve Cambridge's own goals to reach net zero emissions, many of our existing buildings will need to be retrofitted despite the fact that weatherization and electrification can be partially or even fully funded through the existing statewide mass save program, many landlords find this process too time consuming and too difficult. How can we encourage landlords to carry out the necessary retrofits while balancing the need to avoid raising rents? Well, you know, that is a challenge because, you know, we are experiencing COVID and um, landlords are paying higher um, taxes as well and some of their residents are, um, are protected, um, rightfully so, from eviction, and some, some are still employed, unemployed. So right now, it is a very challenging time for, um, for everyone, um, including landlords. And so um, I think we need to recognize that the COVID recovery is going to take four to five years to recover. And um, so them footing the bill on retrofitting when they're some of them are trying to collect rent, knowing that they can't um, because we still have people who can't work because they're sick or they're suffering from the effects of COVID still. Um, there are millions of people are, who are still going through that. Um, it, it is going to be a challenge and we need to recognize that. Um, with that said, I think we should do everything in our power to incentivize them, uh, look for sub, um, subsidies that we can get from the utility companies um, uh, that are, um, you know, to, to, to help them, uh, any subsidies from the city. Certainly, um, the city is um, also, you know, housing is, a, is, a, is also a major issue that we need to address. We have to feed our residents as well. Um, so it, it is just economically a really challenging time. And so retrofitting is not, um, it's costly. Um, and so we have to figure out, and I don't know the answer to be honest with you on how to incentivize the landlords um, uh, at this because of the economic um, situation that we're in due to COVID. But I, you certainly would look at ways of um, with the city, what we can do. Um, and um, there's a lot of infrastructure projects that the city is also undertaking um, that's gonna be costly as well. Like the bicycle infrastructure project, a lot of our small businesses, we also need to get back on track. So I think it's gonna be a, a very challenging and a balanced approach to, to, to move the needle forward, given um, that we have a, a COVID um, 
situation. Tax breaks are also helpful, um, would be helpful uh, to consider, but again, it will, it will affect the city's um, revenue structure. So, you know, there's, there's gotta be a lot of juggling in order to, to, to tackle this particular issue, honestly. All right, uh, thank you for that. Um, I also wanted to ask, in your responses, you indicated that you want to create incentives, rebates, and a carbon tax to encourage a transition to renewable energy in Cambridge, something we're all in favor of. Uh, can you describe more specifically what programs you would like to implement and how you get stakeholders like developers, the city manager, and other city councilors to support these programs? Well, I certainly support the, the Green New, New Deal. Um, and there are solar projects that, um, and I think there's also through the, through the Biden um, administration, I know there's some efforts to really provide some infrastructure support uh, to, to have more 100% renewable um, and 80% opt-in choices. Uh, so I would definitely promote that. Many people don't know about what those options are. So definitely making sure that we provide, ed educate the public around that. Um, I would, ed, you know, Councillor Zondervan is advancing the Green New Deal. Uh, I would definitely support that. And, um, you know, there are um, the carbon tax credits that we can utilize as well. But a lot of it is, is education is a very complex system that people, that the average citizen needs to understand. Um, as well as counselors. So I think that as um, many incentives and rebates that we have, we should certainly go after um, to, to reduce our, our, um, our costs. All right, thank you. And final question for me. Um, in, your, uh, in several of your responses, you described changes you want to see in the city manager position, which we all know is a, a very powerful position in the city of Cambridge. Uh, including having them hold biannual town halls and prioritize the needs of residents over those of developers. How do you plan on using your role, if elected, as a city councilor to make this happen? To the prioritize the needs of, of residents over developers? Uh, you, you talked about wanting to see the city manager to do this, about having them hold town halls, about having them you know, have more access to residents and to developers. How do you as a city councilor hope to make this happen? Well, I can't make it happen by myself. <laughs> I, I would hope that we would have a more progressive counselor, uh, council, uh, including myself. Um, and I would work with my peers uh, to have re regular, um, um, you know, in terms of my, my background, in uh, I take a grassroots approach to my work in terms of outreach. So it's really important to meet people where they are and that may mean actually going to where they are and not assuming that people can go on a Zoom meeting or when we roll out um, um, major initiatives in the city, you shouldn't have to wake up the next day and see that it's happening. We, we need to engage our citizens early and often. Um, we need to make sure that, that we have cultural, culturally, appro um, I don't like the word appropriate, culturally connected um, resources and advocates uh, to be able to make sure that the word gets out. I feel that communication actually in COVID is much better. I'd like to see that often, more often uh, uh, as, a, as a practice so that people are more informed. It is via email. Um, and I know that we do mail, uh, the city does mail a quarterly um, um, materials to folks in different languages. But I think, you know, really being accessible, very accessible to the community is important. For example, I facilitated a, a meeting with the Cambridge Sum of the Black Business Network, which I'm the facilitator for. And this network formed uh, during um, the reckoning, the Black Lives Reckoning last June. And one of the, the, the needs, um, the requests from this group was that people wanted to uh, talk to the city manager. So we invited him to a meeting and many of the businesses, um, I would say that the, the most um, people that showed up to that meeting that the city manager was there and we had a networking session, et cetera. And uh, I can't tell you how many business owners, and these were small business owners, minority owned uh, business owners who said that they have never had a conversation with the city manager. They've never met the city manager, even though it was virtual. They never 
they never, they, 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 the city manager was very much accessible to them in the meeting and they felt that he was a human being that they could talk to that. Um, and he, his responses seemed to be very honest and authentic. And it was a very positive experience. And that was us, me taking the initiative to invite the city manager to a community meeting of small business owners that were largely business owners of color who never really felt they had access to our manager. And they felt empowered because they at least know that he, in this case, uh, the, the, who we have now was accessible. So that's the type of, of accessibility that we need to have with our manager, um, not just our counselors, but need to be more accessible to the community. So this is the opportunity to choose a new city manager. And for me, I, I, a reference, I, I would love to get a reference from residents on their experience with the, the city manager that we're gonna be uh, selecting. They need to come with uh, community references because that tells me that, they'll, that they, will, they are connected to the community where they were in their work and uh, they really need to be people centered. And that's, an, that's a, a, a litmus test of how they can um, lead um, in their role as a chief executive for our city. So I feel that not only the city manager but the, the leadership within the city should also be accessible uh, to, 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 um, to the residents. And we shouldn't have to fight to get ear time or fight to get a meeting on, on a rollout that's happening in our community because our concerns weren't addressed. And that's why I think it's also important to have an ombudsman or woman or person to represent residents, especially in low income uh, developments so they can feel free to raise their voices freely. You know, if there are 144 trees being cut down in, in, a, in their community, but you know, they're more concerned that um, if they speak up, you know, that, that they may lose housing that will be developed. And so, um, you know, those are the types of, of situations that people need to be able to ha speak, speak uh, freely. But if they can't have someone that they trust, a trusted person, uh, speak on their behalf. All right, uh, Nicola, thank you so much for talking with us. I wish we could keep talking for much longer, uh, but we want to end by giving you two minutes to add anything else people want, you want people to know about how you will, if elected, uh, deal with climate change in a way that balances the competing needs of your constituents. Well, you know, um, I'm not an overnight environmentalist. Um, it's part of my value system. I promote green events of actually years ago, um, zero waste events actually. And years ago, um, the city hired me to uh, do this campaign called Express Yourself, uh, which um, engaged the late Julia Parker, the late Robert, I'm sorry, the, the late Julia Child, the late Robert Parker, uh, Harvey Cox, who I ran into the other day, a professor at Harvard, Juanetta Jackson, Jimmy Tingle, uh, Florence Ladd, people within the community who, who were known, our local celebrities, um, who were walking, biking, taking the tea, doing alternative ways of getting around instead of using a car. And I'd like to see more of that happen because it was a successful campaign and we, we, we need to do more public, public education in our community. People wanna learn more. We shouldn't have in terms of environmental justice, a handful of people of color in this. Let's be real. Um, if in order to move the needle forward, we need all voices at the table and we need all voices of people looking like myself and others um, at the table. And in order to do that, we need to reach out. We need to educate. We need to include in our curriculum, start young, have, have um, environmental advocates um, that uh, within our school system, within our middle schools, and uh, because it's really important, our community is affected um, by asthma. Um, there are issues that um, you know people need to understand why our trees are important, not not a di dichotomy or 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 pitting trees against anything else. It should be just as important, and people need to understand that. And that's what environmental justice is about: is about 
uh, making sure that we bring the voices, but we also provide the opportunity to educate in a way that people can understand uh, such as issues around health issues and how health in the environment affects people, how local food and supporting a local food economy and having farmers and fishermen and, um, and access to the, the local food economy as a way of protecting our environment and also providing healthy food for our local folks. This is the area I've been working in for the last 12 years. So it's really important to, um, I'm excited and passionate about being an environmentalist, but we need to get that passion um, in, a, in, a, in a larger way and not the same, uh, the same old, same old people, not the usual suspects. So I, as a counselor, I will expand the net um, to make sure that more voices, um, especially people of color um, are, are, are in this space. And, and part of that is making sure that we educate uh, folks about and, 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 and the benefits of, of, of why they too are part of this movement uh, in making our environment a healthy place uh, for all Cambridge residents. All Thank right. you. What, what a great note to end on. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. I know, I know it's a very busy season for everybody. Um, but th thank you so much. Uh, we should have the recording for this go up on CCTV as soon as possible, hopefully. Um, and I will email you to let you know when that happens. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, I, I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you. For, I don't thank want to take up any more of your time. Thank but, you. Yeah, have a good care. night. Have a nice night. Bye-bye. Uh,